Mavs fans for Life Podcast. I am Landon Thomas, joined by my co-host Sean Abaz Makani. Today's episode is about the Mavs versus Clippers. Well, obviously, we gave y'all just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little, just a little last week. And then after that, we'll talk about predictions, of course, starting with the Mavs versus Clippers. And then let's have some fun. Let's go throughout the whole playoffs. I mean, do we have to wait for the 8C, Sean of us? No, not tonight. Okay. Without Zion? <laughs> Come on, man. Light the beam, baby. Light the Light beam. The... <laughs> All right. So, Sean of us, the Mavericks make the playoffs. They missed it last season. They bounce back. They make incredible trades that just saves their season mm-hmm. and saves their defense. Um, they They capture the fifth seed in the West but they also have the sixth best record in the league. <laughs> uh, funny how that works. Make it but make sense. Make it make sense. So this is now the Mavs versus Clippers part three. We know what happened against the Clippers <laughs> in the first two. One went uh, six, one went seven. And now this one is two totally different teams, but the main components. Um, well, well, Kyrie is a main component. Of these two, two two teams, you got Luka Doncic and Kyrie versus, you know, will he play? Will he not play? The mystery involves Kawhi. But the, you also have Paul George and James Harden and great role players on both teams. So, first of all, before we even get to predictions, Sean Avaz, what is your reaction to the Mavericks going up against the Clippers with Kawhi or without Kawhi? I love it. I, I think you, the, it's, you know, as, as good as the Mavericks played down the stretch, you know, mm-hmm. I don't think anybody, you know, Mavs fans, reporters, I mean, you, t- you talk about beginning of the season or even, you know, into December and January, I don't think anybody thought that the Mavericks would be a five seed. You know, we, you and I had predicted seven, um, mm-hmm. la- you know, before the season started, that they would be vying for a play in spot. I mean, it looked that way up until the trade deadline, and the trade deadline comes, and and the Mavericks were arguably the hottest team down the stretch, and and pulled themselves out. I think they were eighth or ninth, and you know, kind of teetering in that range for a couple, you know, a couple of weeks, and then they just went on a crazy run and beat the teams they needed to beat, like Sacramento, like Golden mm-hmm. State, to to kind of you know get further away from them and and get into you know playoff territory where. Now they've had a chance to rest. You know, Derek Lively's had a chance to, you know, unfortunately grieve the passing of his mom, um, you know, which is which is always really sad. Um, he's had a chance to rehab his injury a little bit. You get guys like Luca and Kyrie, you know, some rest when they definitely need it. And you go up against a team that's knocked you out of the playoffs, you know, two out of the last four years, right, or four times in the postseason. So it's kind of like, you know, it's – I look at it and it's like the Rangers having to get through the Astros last year to go to the world series. Like you got to slay the dragon, you know, you gotta, you gotta beat the team that's been standing in your way for all this time, you know, and, and what better game of Thrones series, something like, I mean, if it's going to be a bloodbath, I can tell you that. Cause the Clippers, even if Kawhi doesn't play, I mean, let's not forget this team was the hottest team in basketball up until January when they started getting injured, you know, they were the best team in the Western conference. You know, we, There was talk about them being, you know, a finals contender. And and you know what? With a healthy Kawhi, they might be, you know. I think everything for the Clippers hinges on Kawhi Leonard's knee. Um, you know, Kawhi, Paul George, Westbrook, Harden, I think they all played the most minutes they've played um, with the Clippers this year. Um, you know, they mm-hmm. played the most games they've played in a season. So they've got some wear and tear on their bodies, and you're starting to see the injuries kind of, um, you know, really starting to creep up, especially with Kawhi and, and everything for the Clippers hinges on that. Uh, but from the Mavericks perspective, I mean, this is what you want. Like if you're a Mavs fan and I, I can guarantee you, Luca wanted this too. Luca's looking and so I, now I've got Kyrie. The fact mm-hmm. that the Mavericks went six and seven against the Clippers with the roster that they had and the performance of the other players on that team during both of those series is a testament to how well Luca played. Luca just cooked the Clippers in both. And I think, yeah. Now he doesn't have to take on that burden, right? He's got Kyrie. He's got PJ Washington, Dante Exum. We've talked about the trust factor that he has with his teammates. I think this is exactly who the Mavericks wanted. And I think it's a perfect situation for them to to be able to go up and get past that one, you know, the one team that's really stood in their way, you know, in the postseason the last couple of years. Yeah. And, and 
you brought up something that definitely needs to be brought up um with Derek Lively. Definitely want to, you know, um send condolences and, and prayers to him and his his family going through this difficult time, you know, Kathy Drisdell. Uh, you know, every, every time I saw Lively off the court in Dallas, obviously um his mom was right next to him. And you know, that's it's it's very sad what he's gone through in his childhood. And you, you kind of see the makeup of him. You know, that's why he is so strong. And that's why he is so mature at a young age. So our thoughts and prayers definitely go to him. And it's good to see the Mavericks take, you know, the initiative to surround him and, and, and provide him with everything that he needs during this time. And, and you know, just be there for him as well. You know, the team is, is a second family to him, especially at a young age. And it, it, it's it's sad to see, um, but definitely, uh, you know, um, am, admire his his strength that that, you know, he's able to, um, you know, suffer very tra tragic moments in his life and can still push forward. So definitely thoughts and prayers go out to Derek Lively and his family. Uh -huh. um, and then just going off of the Clippers and and Mavs, you know, like you said, it, it really was those two series were a testament to Luca and how how great he really was, um, you know, back to back years, which is very tough. And I I think you said it very well, like the best you could, because now he has options and not only just options creating offense with Kyrie and in um Exum, he has he has better athletes and better defenders um, around, you know, those three guys, those two stars. And that's what, you know, also gives them the trust factor and his teammates performing. I mean, you know, with Lively, Gafford, uh, PJ, uh, Dante, and Derek Jones Jr., you know, you know what you're going to get from them. It's just the, the X factors if they play a lot. THJ. Uh, Josh Green, you know, those type of players. So it's going to be very exciting to see uh, with or without Kawhi, it'll still be competitive. Um, but yeah. I agree with you. I think, I think, you know, Kawhi is pretty much their identity, like on success. I think he is the reason that they will beat the Mavericks or he's the reason, you know, that the Mavericks will uh, beat the Clippers you know him him not playing so um you know i think it's a toss-up if he plays and, and i'll go up into predictions later but just what he brings to that team defensively especially defensively but you know offense too it just makes that team where you play true you play honest you don't you yeah. don't know you have pj and harden but if you have Kawhi on top of that it's very hard to beat them so you know, it's they're kind of polar opposites, honestly. I mean, the Mavericks, after the trade deadline, were a top three mm -hmm. team in the league. And, you know, the Clippers, before the trade deadline, um, or, you know, just the first three months of the season, they were, like you mentioned, they were like a top three team. Everything that they're, the, the national media were saying about the Clippers, they're now saying about the Mavericks. So it's very interesting you know, a meeting of the norm or in the meeting of the middle, who performs the best, but you also have a different Mavericks team, you know, after the trade deadline, it's, it's not the same team with the Clippers. It is the same team. So, you know, it, it's interesting how this will play out, but I'm excited not only to see Luca, uh, you know, have them again, like, you know, like you said, with the Dragons, but I'm also excited to have him be comfortable in this series when you know you have Kyrie with him yeah. and you have guys that he trusts. You know, you don't have guys that are like, well, you know, I don't know about this, but we'll see what happens. Like he knows everyone understands their role on this team. So mm -hmm. that's what's comforting to see with Luca. And then with Kyrie, you know, he's been through this. And so he, he's, He's at calm. He said he has nerves in big games, but he knows the process from his experience in the league to combat those nerves and make big shots in big games. Yeah, and you brought up 
you know, Kawhi's defense. And I think that's obviously the X factor for the Clippers is his health because, you know, he is such a talent on that end of the floor that he's a guy that can, you know, the Mavs game plan, you know, in my mind is going to be very similar to how they've played before against the Clippers. And that's just attacking Zubac, right? Like they're, they're mm-hmm. just going to go at if it's a Zubac. And we saw, you know, if you remember back to those, you know, to those postseason, um, those other postseason games that they've played. I mean, the Mavericks had great, had a lot of success doing it. And what happened was when the Clippers went small, the Mavericks just couldn't defend it, you know, and, and the Mavericks couldn't hit shots. You know, we're talking, you know, yep. we've, we're remembering Boban on the floor and KP in the corner and, you know, Jalen Brunson, you know, Trey Burke getting 40 minutes a game over Jalen Brunson. You know, it, it, this is a completely different Mavericks team, but Kawhi adds such an element to, being able to help off of his defender and go help Zubak on a pick and roll or, you know, to kind of play drop coverage, you know, with the pick and roll that the Mavericks love to run. So he, he adds a whole new element to that team. And without him, Paul George is a good defender, but Paul George is not the same defender that he was a couple of years ago, you know, and it's just, other than that, I mean, you know, Terrence Mann's okay. Like he, I feel like he's fallen off a little bit and there's still the Zubak and, and now the Clippers aren't, you brought it up, but they're not the same team they were a couple of years ago. You know, they had a significant amount of depth. It felt like they could roll out Nicholas Batum and they could roll out uh, Marcus Morris, you know, as, as a small ball five. And that really kind of gave teams fits. But now, you know, other than Zubak, I mean, what are you going to run out Mason Plumley? Like, I, you know, who's going to, you know, who are you going to, if he gets in foul trouble, like what they're going to have to go small in the Mavericks now have a two-headed monster at center where they can just punish those matchups. You know, they don't have to be concerned about taking as many threes, you know, and and we've seen it in recent games. And I think that's why the Mavericks are set up for success. You know, whether they win or lose, you know, we'll give our predictions later, but yeah, we've seen them win games where they're not hitting threes. We've seen them win games where they are hitting threes. We've seen them play a lot of close games. I think they're the best clutch team in the NBA. You know, we've seen them win a lot of close games recently. Like they've been through the ringer with this group, you know, yep. even though the trade deadline was only a couple of months ago, but they've been through the highs and the lows. They've lost some games that they should have won. You know, the Golden State game comes to mind, you know, so it, where it's just poor shooting nights, but they've overcome some of that and they've, you know, they've put themselves in a position now to be successful. And I think they can adapt their style of play to what the defense is giving them as opposed to teams of old where it's, you know, let Luca do everything and kick it out and pray to God that Chris Porzingis can hit a three. Yeah, you 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 said it best. I mean they they targeted Zubac um in those in the series where, you know, that's when they went small and that's how they were able to combat the Mavs offense attack. And they ultimately won the series because, you know, at first you Luca is putting Zubox in, you know, he, he's, he's making them switch where he's targeting Zubox um, um, on offense. And, you know, that's where he either cooks them or he gets help. You know, he brings, he brings another defender. So they double him and he passes and makes the right read. So when you go small, you can just switch. And that's where Batum was so vital for that yeah. team so vital for that team where you don't need help. Obviously it's Luca. He's still going to get 35, 40, 45 a game in the playoffs, but you know, you still can not get threes. You rather take a two against Batum, you know, one-on-one than a open wide open three from his teammate. So uh, it's going to be interesting how they do that this time around. Like you said, when they don't have Morris, when they don't have Beverly, they don't have Batum. Robert Covington's the other guy that comes to mind. Covington, I mean, he was a, he was I mean they were so deep, but you know, they traded all that away for Harden. So it's going to be interesting. It's going to be an interesting dynamic because, you know, the Mavs, they traded for defense and, and the Clippers traded for offense. Yep. So um, it's going to be very interesting. And, in and, in, And on the flip side, that's where, you know, like you said, the Mavericks can go small. They have so many options. They can go big where, you you know, you have Gafford and then you have Lively. They both um, back each other up, you know, when one's off, the other's on. Or do you go small and play the PJ Maxi lineup? Yeah. So there's they have the 
they have the dynamic um you know to do both last time they only really had dwight powell and maxi so now you have options in dorian you know so now you have bigger guys and you have the flexibility to play small or play big depending on your matchup and if the clippers you know go small after lucas cooking and kyrie mm-hmm. you know they go small okay we'll we'll have pj and maxi you just hope maxi kicks it on which he really he usually does in playoffs but regular yeah. season it's always hit or miss but playoffs he's well. pretty good he's, he's played well the last week or so i mean last week last yep. week or so the regular which is season. great because you yeah. want that yeah which was scary because you know uh, he was playing in one of those games that were he didn't need to play and he had like a stinger and you're like oh oh yeah i'm <laughs> gonna need him for the playoffs and it was good to see him get rest but another great point that you mentioned is rest you know obviously lively had that injury um which he will be it looks like you know good to go i mean i haven't heard otherwise but yeah you know uh and then also Luca and Kyrie, it's going to be 10 days between their last game played and game one of the Clippers. Those two on 10 days rest is incredible because they still practice. They still get in work, but like missing, you know, game time is good for their bodies. So um, I'm excited to see that as well. And then just the Gafford, his awareness of knowing his weakness and he said it in the past couple of weeks he said you know he knows that you know playing one through five being able to, to switch on guards is something he's not used to something that he needs to work on and he's getting better on it he's he's putting focus on it to be able to play in the playoffs where you know you might have to guard uh james harden for um one stretch you know by yourself like you have to know how to be able to to just hold your ground. Obviously, these are great players on the other end, but just hold your ground. So I'm excited to see how they, the Mavericks do defensively starting out in game one and then adjustments after that. Yeah, I'm, it's going to be I'm, – I'm trying to think of how, what the defensive lineup or what the matchup is going to look like. Like I would assume if Kawhi plays, you're going to put P.J. on him or Derek Jones. Mm-hmm. One of them is going to be on Kawhi. One's going to be on Paul George, I would assume. Um, Ooh, who takes Harden? See, that's – yeah, I, I mean, I would assume you'd put Luka on Harden. Like, I, yeah. but, you know, I just – and then Kyrie's maybe on – who's oh, – who do they start? Terrence Mann? Like, if Kyrie's on Mann, just command's not, like, a great shooter. Um, So, you know, you can kind of play off a little bit. And Harden's, you know, more of a facilitator at this point. Like, this isn't Houston James Harden we're talking about. So, yeah. you know, my big concern – looking at the Clippers roster outside of Kawhi is Norman Powell. Like I think I feel like Norman Powell is a guy that he's a prototypical catch and shoot guy that can get hot at any time. And we've seen him get hot before and he's taken over games for the Clippers this year. Um, that's if I'm a Mav, like if I'm a Maverick coach, like that's one of my primary focuses is how do you, you know, get mm-hmm. the ball out of his hands or how do you, when he's in the game, how do you switch up your defensive adjustments to account for him? Because the Mavericks can't let him get hot, you know, from three. Yeah, um, That's going to be a big, you know, and, and to your point, if the Mavericks go small, then I think it gives you more versatile options on defense because Maxi can guard one through five. PJ can guard one through five. Josh Green can guard one through, you know, like you give yourself a little bit more options. So I think that it's going to be very interesting to see. And I, I think what Jason Kidd's going to do is let Ty Lu kind of dictate how the Mavericks are going to play, right? Like you let them come out and let them show their cards, right? The Mavericks know what their starting five and their top three guys off the bench in Lively, Exum, and probably what, Maxi or Hardaway at this point? Like the Mavericks are comfortable with those top eight guys coming off the bench. But if the Clippers then decide to go small, I think the Mavericks have a better roster that's suited for being able to switch their style of play in game better than the Clippers are, if that makes sense. You know, I think they they have that ability to run out a lineup with P.J. at center. And, you know, Luca, Kyrie, Josh Green, and Maxi, or Hardaway and Derek Jones. I mean, the the possibilities are, are limitless when you've got the, the athleticism that Dallas does and, and really the, you know, you've got all these wing players that, you know, can also, you know, that can play, you know, fairly good defense. So I think, I think Mavericks would just have to let the Clippers kind of you know, see what they're doing, let them show their cards and then just adjust accordingly. 
Yeah, I'm trying to think about kids' playoff rotation, you know, because obviously, like you said, usually in playoffs, there's only like an eight-man rotation. Yeah. And, you know, you li- you listed Lively, um, Exum, and you know, Maxi, and then, you know, Hardaway. So it's like a... And then green, you know, so that's yeah. what I'm trying to figure out is, is green and THJ not going to play much. I mean, you really, cause you know, you figure Luca and Kyrie are going to go all out yeah. in the playoffs where they're going to play, you know, high, high thirties at the minimum, oh, like yeah. lo- low forties. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So like, is there enough space? I mean, obviously, Derek Jones, he's probably going to play in the high 20s, uh-huh. low 30s. So, like, is there enough room? Because you, you got you got Exum, who's going to play minutes with Kyrie and Luka, too. So, yeah. where's the space for Green and Hardaway? That's a good point. I think, again, it's going to depend on matchups. Like, if the Clippers go small, I think you'll see less yeah. minutes from Lively and Gafford and good point. more with Maxi, right? Um, and probably more with Maxi, Hardaway, Green. Like you can rotate those guys in. Um, if if it's a traditional lineup, I think it's going to be mainly Exum, Lively, and Maxi off the bench. Like I think Maxi against the Clippers. I think we've seen we've seen him have success against them prior, and I think there's a trust factor there from de- like defensively, yeah. Um, especially um, going up against guys like Maxi can guard Kawhi. Maxi can guard Paul George. Like you can put Maxi on James Harden. Like there's a versatility there that that Hardaway doesn't give you. And Josh Green still looks, you know, um, rough from his injury. So I don't know if there's a trust factor there going, you know, or a high level of confidence going yeah. in, you know, against the Clippers with Josh Green. And so I think it's a good problem to have. Like we've talked about this, right? Where it's the fact that you've got enough guys that you can willingly rotate. And who knows? Like if Dante is having a bad game, maybe you you take him out and you put in THD. If it's a blowout. Right. Or if it's if it's a, you know, 15, 20 point game, maybe you try to get some of these guys some run to get get their confidence levels up because you're going to need them, you know, in the playoff. Like if the Mavericks are going to make a stretch run, they're going to need every, you know, all they're going to need nine guys, really nine, ten guys to step up and, and play their best basketball. And so it's you're right. It's going to be really interesting to see what they do. But it, in my mind, in this series in particular, I think it's going to be Dante Exum, Lively and, and Kleba getting the most minutes off the bench and then. You know, you kind of rotate that Kleba role with Timmy and, and Josh Green, depending on matchups. But Dante and Derek Lively, I think, are, are a foregone conclusion um, yeah. they're gonna, to get the most run off the bench for sure. Yeah, I agree with you. And, you know, it's it's tough because it, it's tough to, to think about what's going to happen until it happens. I mean, it's only two days away, but, you know, it, it's – this is where – there's no personal feelings. I mean, it's business, you know? Yeah. So even if, if green and, and Hardaway don't play, I mean, that's just what it is. And, and you, from what you've seen in the last two weeks, you kind of don't want them to play. I mean, just being honest, I mean, yeah. they they were the only ones playing in, um in the last game of the season where eight, eight guys were out yep. for, <laughs> for the last Injured. game of the season. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> does that kind of tell you who the rotation is going to be? Because you could have, yeah. you could have rested one of those guys. I mean, Green or Hardaway, but you know they might be. I would like to see where you see the eight guys, and then at the end of the first, early second quarter, if the Mavs are up and you have a little leeway, you can play THJ and see if he can extend. Because that's the great thing about THJ is. Mm-hmm. He can extend the leads, can but if it, it pretty easily. But if it's a close game, I'd rather just play Green for a few minutes just to give you know maybe Kyrie or Luca or Exum a, a, a you know a breather because Josh Green is the opposite of THJ. He's he he will take wide open shots, but he's also timid on taking you know, big time shots. Like he passes more. He looks for the pass more than he does the shot, which is a good thing. And it's a bad thing. It's very safe. So, you know, you know, too safe sometimes. Exactly. That's the problem. He's too safe at times. And Hardaway's on the opposite spectrum where he's, 
he's he's risky at times. So it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. You don't want to take too many shots out of rhythm, you know, where it's taking your offense out of flow of the game. So it depends. Like you said, it depends on matchup. It depends on do you need defense? Do you need offense? Do you need a, just a couple minutes of a breather? Are you up big? Are you down big? Um, is it a close game where you need somebody safe? Or are you down big where you need – you need a shot maker and just to get back in the game or you up big and you now you're trying to now it's where coaching comes involved. It's like, do I want to make it safe or we just keep this lead or do I want to extend the lead because it's game one and yeah. I want to make a statement. And it's going to be a physical series. Like there's no doubt about it. This isn't, yeah. these, are, these aren't two finesse teams, right? These are teams that'll punch you in the mouth. Yeah. Um, and they both play a lot of ISO basketball. I think, I think they're, they're both top 10 in isolation. They're both top 15 in defense, top five in, in off. I mean, the similarities between the Mavericks and the Clippers are, are kind of uncanny, but yeah. um, it's going to be physical. You know, I, there's going to be times to your point where you're going to have to get Luca and Kyrie a breather. And so it's going to be interesting to see who that guy is off the bench. Like who's, who gets the Especially first when call. XM is on the court. So you're yeah, like, I'm, I'm interested. I'm really interested. It's a good point to see. Is it game one? Is it game two? Who is that? that guy that we're kind of like, all right, he's getting the first, like, we know what the top, I wouldn't even say, um, well, yeah, I would say Maxi. So we know what the top eight are, right? But who's that ninth guy? Like, who gets the first call, right? I, I, would, I would love to see kind of what that confidence level looks like from Jason Kidd. Like, are you going to go with THJ, who you know can shoot you out of a game? Or are you going to go with, with Josh Green, who can pass you out of game like you know there's there's like you said there's good and bad things to both of them so it's going to be that's a good i'm going to be looking for that that's a I, i'm really interested to see who that ninth kind of guy is because that's going to tell us a lot about the confidence level jason kidd has with with those two guys yeah and it, it it's really a bad thing because you have three guys on the bench who really should be playing in this series but they're not going to as much as they should if they were on their game the whole season, yeah. which is Hardaway, Green, and Jaden Hardy. Those three guys, they really, they really, you know, just went back and forth on who's hot at the moment. But, you know, Hardaway was a six man candidate, um, a leading candidate for six man of the year the first couple months. And then, you know, yeah. it's just that since then he's been off or on. And Green, you know, he's been injured. And then when he plays, he's making all his corner threes. And then the next two weeks, he's missing all his corner Can't threes. Do anything, yeah. And then Hardy, you know, he's just back and forth. He's inconsistent. Um, those yeah. three guys should be – one of them should have took the reins this season and say, hey, well, it really was Exum. But, you know, out of those three guys, it should say, hey, I'm here too. And, you know, I'm stepping up for this team. And I'm going to be consistent throughout the whole season. Yeah, I you're, and we've talked about it a lot. You know, when we did our grades, you know, kind yeah. of the disappointment we had in all three of them. You know, like none of them really took over. You know, took you had an opportunity there, and in some ways, it's a good thing because I don't. You know, if if Timmy had stayed hot like he was and it it played better, I don't think we would have seen this out of Dante Exum. Like I, I don't think Exum sure. would have gotten the run that he did. Yeah. Um. You know, so it's a good and bad thing when you look at it that way. But you're right. Like, there's no trust there. Like, even Jaden Hardy, like, I, you know, I wanted to see a better showing from him against Detroit and Oklahoma City. Like, you know, when the Mavericks are resting everyone, I just didn't see it. You know, it, yep. it still looked like the same struggles. And, you know, I know and we're. That's when you can shoot. Like, yeah, go get your Do buckets. your thing. Go do your thing. Like, what are you doing? You know, all um, three of them did not do them. it. AJ Lawson looks good though. I will say that I do like, yeah, I, yeah. I like what I'm seeing from AJ Lawson. Um, yeah. And, and I know we're, we're in the playoffs. We're not even talking about off season, but Omax look good too. Omax look great. It would not shock me if all three of those guys are not on this team next year. Hardy mm. and, and Timmy, like it would, it wouldn't shock me at all, to be honest. Like it's yeah. just, it's win time. It's win time. Like you, you can't have guys that are struggling like that. I had a friend texting me the other day asking, you know, what I thought about, the lack of Jaden Hardy's playing time. And I was like, this team's in win now mode. You can't be, you, they're not going to throw out Jaden Hardy and say, go develop. Like he needs to be yeah. on a, he needs to be on a team like Detroit or something like that, where he can get run and play as much as he can to develop his game. Like, it's just not going to fit here with Dallas, unfortunately, which un he hasn't, he, he hasn't shown anything to me. And I mm -hmm. think to you as well, we've like, you and I have 
have chatted about this. Like he had a chance to really take take that role away from Tim Hardaway Jr. when he was struggling, and he didn't. And Josh Green, who's been unfortunately consistently injured and then consistently inconsistent when he plays, and it's frustrating because we all have high hopes for him and we all like him, but it's infuriating if you're supposed to be a defensive specialist, but you can't get over screens, and it's like, all right, like then you're not going to play. Like it's simple yep. as that. Um, yeah. So yeah, I I don't know who. I, I don't think Jaden Hardy's getting a lot of minutes this series, if any. Um, mm-hmm. But between Josh Green and Timmy, it's going to be really interesting to your point to see which one is going to be that guy that they that that Jason Kidd kind of throws out there. Maybe change momentum, right? Like if the Mavericks are struggling, if they're shooting bad, you know, do you put in Timmy to kind of just say, "Hey, man, go get us a three, like go get us some buckets," or if we're struggling defensively, do you put in Josh Green? I, I don't know. It it it's going to be <laughs> it's going to be really really interesting to see. Well, you'll know in two days. Well, two days. There you go. <laughs> and that's what interesting because he's not going to do a 10 man rotation. I mean, unless no. something's going bad. This is the playoffs. Like we yeah. said, you only play eight or nine at the most. Uh, you know, it, it, it's going to be interesting. But they just extended Josh Green. Like he's supposed to be that guy. Like we know Tradable THJ. Contract. Well, true. But, you know, if they can't, that's what I was very. I was very interested on, you know, PJ Washington trade because I thought that was a great spot for Josh Green. Obviously, that would have been a lot in the trade, but because you just extended him and he was playing good um, early on in the season. But, Mm -hmm. you know, I thought Hardy or Green would be great in Charlotte because, you know. Yeah. And I I remember, I think they had asked for Josh Green and the Mavericks said no. And that's why the first had to go. I, if I remember reading that correctly, I can't remember who, which who makes that. sense. Yeah. I think that, cause Josh Green was playing well at that time. You're right. Uh, it was right before the injury. I think we were, you know, we were really impressed with the way he was playing, but you know, I, I still have, I'm going to hold out hope for him. Cause I really like Josh Green. You yeah. know, I just, he, he's just got to be more consistent. I mean, these are great guys, but you're just keeping it real. I mean, he has to be more consistent. Like you said, these guys might not even be on the team um, next season because if you're not a main contributor on the playoff rotation, in the playoff rotation, then, you know, you can't be shocked if they're gone. Yeah. And, you know, like, like you said, it's a tradable contract and you know, who knows in the off season, what happens? Like, I'm just throwing out things, you know, not starting rumors or anything, but, you know, once his contract kicks in, you know, because that's the problem with trading him, um, you know, now is he's on that rookie deal. Yeah. But once that contract kicks in for next season in the off season, you know, you can you go try to get Alex Caruso or can you try to get those type of guys to come into your roster where the the contracts will are, are similar then? Can you go get the one guy I've been saying that I've wanted on the Mavericks for four years and call Brooklyn, call Brooklyn and I'll see what you can get. See, see what, what it's going to take to get Mikael Bridges in Dallas. That, <laughs> it's going to be a lot be, more than Josh Green. No, obviously. Right. But if you're giving up Josh Green, Jaden Hardy, Timmy, can you throw in Maxi in there to, to get them to give you Mikael and Dorian and whatever picks you have left? You, How you many, throw that's away? the thing. How many picks do they have? Because they're gonna want some picks. That's all, especially going into a full rebuild where you don't even have Mikel. I mean, they they would want a lot of picks because you know they sent out a lot of picks to get Irv, uh, not Irving because he signed there, but uh, you know Harden and all these mm-hmm. and KD. I mean, you would have to. It, you would have, in, I mean, I don't know. I I think the maps have. That's that's the pipe dream. That's that's the best dream. case scenario. Wait a minute, man, you give Mikael Bridges, I, I'm gonna go. I'm flying to Vegas that day and put money on Dallas <laughs> to win the title. That's what I'm doing. Well, you you you, you can't do that now. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I could. But like you said, it's it's incredible to see, and we can move on to our predictions. But it's incredible to see where this team is at. You know, just the last two months, how they played. They're arguably the second best team in the league since the trade deadline. Yeah. I mean, you, the, I think the Timberwolves are third, uh, obviously Boston's first, but just looking at the last two months, the Timberwolves have gone really well. Um, and then the Mavs and the Celtics and 
maybe the Thunder or, or Nuggets, but like those are like the, the top five teams that have really stood out in the last two months. Yeah. So I really want to see the Mavericks take care of business. So you go back home at least one and one or two and oh. Don't go obviously you can't go zero oh and two can't back go home. Two. Especially from what we've seen in the last two months. But yeah. I kinda want to see them make a statement and go two oh. Two, two oh. Yeah, bring it home. Yeah. Bring it I home. Agree. So then you have the crowd to, to and put the pressure on the Clippers, you know, in in a um in game three. Yeah. And I kinda do it for I kinda want it for selfish reasons. Because let me tell you why. Uh, you know, May third is game six. Uh and what what is also on that day or that night is Caitlin Clark's first WNBA game oh. in Arlington against the Dallas Wings. Yeah. So the Dallas Wings pre is preseason, but it's Caitlin Clark's first like WNBA wearing a jersey and playing. Yeah. Um. And then also there's a concert at AAC that night as well. Um. Hmm. Who and. Let's not forget the stars are in are the NHL playoffs start Monday too. So Dallas is hosting Vegas on Monday and Wednesday. It's a good thing it's you know they're the Mavs and Stars are alternating alternating. But can you yeah. imagine Bad Bunny? I mean, Bad Bunny, ooh. May third, Bad Bunny, eight PM. Maybe, maybe the the uh schedule makers know something we don't. <laughs> exactly. They're gonna we obviously won't, won't need a game six. Well, that well, that's what I'm saying. Like, if you have tickets to Bad Bunny May 3rd, you're sweating right now. Yeah. You are sweating. <laughs> even if you don't, you know, if, even if you, you don't even like, ba you probably don't even like basketball. Like, you're sweating for that yeah. game. I mean, that concert, because you, you, you blocked your whole schedule and yep. you make sure that night you're not doing anything out that whole day. And then the Mavericks might kick them. They, ha they have priority, obviously, in playoffs. Yeah. They got to kick him um, out and he's got to go perform. What, what stage outside or something? I don't know. I don't even know where you would go from the AAC. Well, he plays May third and May fourth, and they would probably just move it to another day or just cancel, which would be yeah. even worse. That'd be awful. Those, yeah. those, those are my selfish. I was, was going to say awesome. That'd be awful for Bad Bunny fans. <laughs> I'm not. A, I'm not a. I'm not a Bad Bunny guy, but you know, I get it. I get it. Yeah. So all right. So Sean Devaz, predictions. Predictions. So, let's do it. Since we're on the Mavs and Clippers, you start. All right. Uh, with the predictions for the series. Uh, I'm going to assume Kawhi Leonard comes back. Maybe not game yeah, one. We can, we can do if he plays, with, yeah. if he doesn't play. If Kawhi, I, assume, I don't think he's playing game one. I think there's too much uncertainty surrounding it. Um, there's, It's a weird situation because it's like, we're not getting any update. Like Ty Lue is just kind of like, yeah, he's, you know, taking part in non-contact drill. Okay, well, like, Ty, wouldn't shock me if he suits up and plays game one. You know, I, I just don't know. Um, I assume he's going to play a couple of games, uh, but I think the Mavericks win this in six. I, I, I just think this is the, this is the time where the Mavericks will take over. I think the Clippers are competitive. Um, I think they'll take a couple of, you know, a couple of games. I think every game is going to be close. I don't see any blowouts. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think there's any way the Mavericks lose the series, but I, I've got them winning in six. Okay. So you're saying bad bunny, get out of bad the bunny, arena. Out. Make other plans, buddy. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to make a prediction. Well, obviously both. So if Kawhi does not play, I say the Mavs win in five. It's fair. If Kawhi plays, I say Mavs win in six. Like yep. you, you know, it's going to be a competitive series. I think the first two games on the road are going to be really competitive and go yeah. down to the last five minutes, um, which is clutch time. And that's why I think the Mavericks are going to do really well this season is because the Mavericks have a top six record in on the road. They're, they're tied for fifth with, uh, with the Warriors for the whole season on the road. Yeah. Um, so they will do great on the road. I asked Derek Jones about that. He just says, you know, that earlier in the season when they're struggling, they're, they harping on trusting their chemistry and trusting their guys. Mm. Um, obviously, the trades made them way better. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> just the, having that trust. 
and the playoffs are clutch. Like almost every game is a clutch game, right? Like you're you're yeah. in the last like four or five minutes. I mean, it's close, you know. And, and that ten point leads now are like five point leads in the NBA, right? So it's exactly. And that brings me to my next point: is clutch. The yeah. Mavericks are the best team in the league. I mean, arguably. You know, in the clutch time, I mean, we've seen it. The stats show it. The eye test shows it. And now the Mavericks have options. Yep. Like like, like you mentioned, the last two series were just Luka-centric offenses and, you know, teammates playing around him doing really well, uh, making their threes, you know, get into a game six, get into a game seven. But now in playing defense, but now – Who's going to take the last shot? You don't know. It could yeah. be Luca or it could be Kyrie. Could be so Don that's what it could be. Yeah, it could be, it could be Dante. Like, yeah, so many different options. He, that great. That's that's you just mentioned it. That's what's great about this team. PJ had a game, yep. a game winning um, shot. You know, XM has a game tying or game winning shot, and you know Kyrie has it. Luca, he's always um, making big shots in the clutch, and that's what's so great about this team. They have the offense. They have the defense. And and now Coach Kid, his out of time after timeout plays are great. He's in there executing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So that's that's my prediction on that one. I think okay, we're in line. So, so we're in line on this series, uh, which is great for Mavs fans. Uh, so let's start with, and this is the final word predictions um, of the pod. So let's start at the top. I mean. We already said it doesn't really matter um, with the one and eight matchup because you know it it, it is what it is. Um, the Pelicans yeah. without Zion, the Kings without Monk and Herder, um, you know, and the Bulls are Heat. The Heat is just no not Jimmy, the same no, as last year. No Terry Rozier. Yeah. Yes, and then the Bulls. I mean, the Bulls could win tonight. Um, <laughs> Kobe White, man. Kobe White at a. Hell I love of, Kobe. That was yeah. awesome. I did. MIP, put it on his name. Yeah. I know Maxi will probably get it. Um, Tyrese, yeah, but um, he he should be second at least. And then so so we won't go over the um the Thunder versus eight or Celtics versus eight. We both agree. Both on top seeds win. Yeah. Okay. If it yeah. was the Lakers, maybe unless uh, you know a vintage LeBron, but they they got the seventh seed. So yeah, yeah. I think let's... Boston, Boston, OKC. I think win, give it five, six, whatever, four. I mean, who who knows. But okay. I think both win. So let's start in the Western Conference with the Lakers um, in the Denver Nuggets. Denver's number two, this is the number two seed, and Lakers number seven seed. Who do you have? I w- I've been going back and forth on this actually because I think Ooh. I think the Lakers match up really well with Denver, and I think even though they got swept last year in the conference finals, it was close. Like the Lakers were in every game; they were leading in most of those games. Um, but I just think Denver's too good. Like I, I don't, I don't. I'm not, I'm not going to sit and I don't want to hear about the Lakers, you know, after what God forbid they beat Denver and you were never going to hear about any other team for the next like six months, you know? So it's like, <laughs> yeah. all right, just, I, I think Denver wins. I think it's competitive. I think they win in six against, against the Lakers. So thank you, Sacramento Kings for being the Warriors. Cause yeah. can you, can you imagine the Lakers and Warriors getting the last two seasons? Oh my God. Like you said, they will only be talking about those series. Yeah. Um, but. You know, with this one, Michael uh, Malone, like he, he, he talking well, a lot of smack. I love I it. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like he is, he's talking that talk, but yeah. obviously he walked that walk last season. So, yeah. I mean, he said, we beat y'all, what, eight straight times. We swept y'all last year and we beat y'all uh, four times this year. So it's like, dang, I mean, dang, <laughs> but. So uh, that's true because they, they've been competitive and now the Lakers are a different team as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think it's going to be more competitive than we think. I think it will not go to game seven, but it'll go to game six and down at the wire because the yeah. Nuggets, they don't, they're not as deep as last year, but they're still so good. Um, and yeah, I like I uh, Peyton Wat- Watson. You know, he's yeah. really filled the role of Brown, um, Bruce Brown. Yeah. Um, so I'll I take them. In six. All right. What about what? That's the two C. What about Minnesota and Phoenix? Oh, that's going to be a close one as well. 
the inexperienced Timberwolves, um, not an inexperienced, they had some experience in the playoffs, but they're young. Very young. Um, and they have an experienced center with Gobert. But um, I think this is tough because we haven't seen much of the quote unquote big three of the Suns, right, mm-hmm. this season. So they can really turn it on in the playoffs. But I think the the Timberwolves are they just they're just too big uh for the Suns and they play really well mm-hmm. and they have the defense with, you know, obviously uh McDaniels, I mean <sighs> I'm gonna That's say game one. seven. Okay. Game seven. But I say the Timberwolves win. I got Suns and Six. Oh, Suns oh and six. Yeah. why? I know there hasn't been a lot of talk about Phoenix, but they've played really well the last couple of weeks. You know, they also drug themselves out of the play in and to get a playoff spot. You know, and they needed is, some is help. Is that them or is that the Pelicans? It's, just bombing. It could be. Yeah, but I, I think we started to see their big three kind of all play True. together and play well. Um, and I read something, you know, I was, you know, reading up on, on these matchups, and I think Minnesota actually in the clutch is like really awful defensively. Um, yeah. when it comes down to it and and even offensively like other than anthony edwards they don't have like a go-getter you know cat is obviously can can play low and and can hit the three but he's not a guy who can have the ball in his hands and and you know take hey, over don't, the don't game. disrespect Nas Reed down there you know yeah okay all right well i i'm, I'm banking on my boy kevin durant to, to pull that one out and and yeah, send phoenix course. send phoenix into the semis against denver Oh, that's going to be good. That's yeah. going to be good. So Nuggets, Suns, and, and, I, have, and I have. So you have Nuggets, Suns, Mavs, Thunder, and I have the Nuggets, Timberwolves, Mavs, Thunder. Mavs, Thunder, yep. Okay, so do you want to move to the East or do you want to go all the way in the West? Let's finish out the West. I'll give you mine, and then you tell me if it's. Mavs Thunder, and then we've got I've got Suns Nuggets. Give me the Nuggets in six against the Suns, and give me the Mavs in seven over the Thunder. I think I, I, I think the Mavericks have have a confidence. I think OKC is a very good team, but I think they're young, and I think the experience of Kyrie, Luca, guys who've been there before, um, you know, even Jason Kidd, you know, the experience uh, as a coach over Mike Dagnall, who probably is going to win Coach of the Year. Yep. deservedly so um yep. i think that's going to come into play and it, it wouldn't shock me if the mavs win in less than seven but i think that's just going to be a hard a hard fought series between you know the back and forth of shea and luca and so but give me the mavs in seven and and a run to the western conference finals again um where they ultimately will unfortunately be be sent home by the denver nuggets in mm. six so i would take denver in six over dallas um and then denver back to the nba finals Mm, okay, okay. Um, and that's what we should do next week. We should do the awards predictions. Yeah, um, yeah. since the finalists come out on Sunday. Sunday, okay. Uh so that's yours. Um Nuggets and Timberwolves, I think it's gonna be a tough matchup. Um honestly, if I'm the Mavs, I'm so happy they're on the other side of the bracket. <laughs> yeah. Even even the Suns and Lakers. Like yep. those four teams is gonna be brutal. Um, they're gonna beat up on each other. Like that, they really that are. side of the bracket is just gonna go nuts. It's gonna go nuts. That's why I said Timberwolves in seven over the Suns, and I said yeah. the Nuggets down to the wire game six, where it could almost force a game seven with the Lakers. So I'm going to say I'm going to say Timberwolves. No, I'm going to say, uh, obviously, Nuggets over the Timberwolves, but it's a close one. I'm going to say Nuggets in six over the Timberwolves because I think those – I think, honestly, those are the best two teams. Now, I think the Mavs and Timberwolves are neck and neck for – second best second. team in the yeah. in the west and and in the thunder are really fourth which is why i'm going to take as same as you and i'm going to have the same conference finals i'm going to take the mavericks over the thunder you said game 7 i said 7 yeah i i see a lot of game 6s in in yeah. this conference i'm saying the mavericks 
I, I don't think the thun the Thunder are top heavy. I don't think they have eight yeah. guys. And I think I mean, they're they can't defend the paint. Like Chet, I, I mean no, Chet's a great player, but I think Lively's bigs, a, Lively and Gafford will feast on him. Yeah, and, and I mean Williams off the bench, you know, and um Hayward off the bench. I mean I'm yeah. I'm not I'm not really stressed about those guys. They're starting five really good, but like you said, they can dominate in the paint, which they have against the Thunder. Obviously, one of those games were bad on the Mavs, but like they have the the edge on in the paint yep. just because you have two of them, Gafford and Lively. So I think they would really dominate, and I think PJ would have a really good series that one against yeah. the, the Thunder. So I'm gonna say six, and then this is the th- Mavs versus Nuggets. I went I'm back gonna, and forth on that. I'm going to say game seven. Okay. Game seven, and the Mavericks lose to the Nuggets because I'm going to stick to my prediction. Obviously, I was off on the seeding. We both said seventh seed. But I said they would make a couple trades in the offseason, which they did the trade deadline, and yeah. be a contender next year. So I think the Mavericks lose in seven to the Nuggets for the Western Conference. Yeah, I'm – in line, so we've got Nuggets coming out of the West. We want to just roll through the East. I think we both probably have the same. I think we both have the same pick coming out of that. <laughs> yep. I mean, yeah. okay. So let's. I mean, I this, the first yeah. round will be interesting, but first round, give me Boston. Give me. I the the Cleveland Orlando series. I think is really intriguing Four, five. because yeah. I I really like what Orlando's doing as a team defensively. Mosley, um, shout out to Mosley. Mosley is a great coach. Um, Palo's fun to watch. Franz Walker got snubbed. He, he got did. snubbed from he Team snubbed. USA. USA. So yeah. you know he's going to prove a point. Yeah, I think they're like a piece or two away from like really contending. Um, but you know, to be where they are, I think it's great. I give me the magic over the 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 Cavs. You know, um, and then. Man, I wanted to say the Sixers over the Knicks, but after watching him beat the other night, I'm just like, I don't know how healthy this guy is. Like, if he's healthy, I think the Sixers win that in, in six. Um, yeah. I'm going to assume that he's going to be okay. It just, he looked really rough against Miami, but then he still took over in the fourth quarter, which is kind of crazy. So give me the Sixers in six against the Knicks. Oh. Uh, and, then give me, and then give me the Pacers over the Bucks. Oh, okay, okay. I, I think Giannis is hurt. I don't think he's. I don't think he's gonna. I think Milwaukee is, you know, in all kinds of a bad way, a bad place. I don't see Doc continuing to coach there after this year. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, they're just. I, I think there's too much stuff going around um, with that team. So then, I would say it's a Philly Boston Conference Finals, and and give me Boston out of the East to play the Nuggets in the NBA Championship. Okay, so I will say, obviously Boston, and then uh, the four five. I'm going to say the Cavs, and I love the Magic with all the young guys and and Jamal Mosley, great coach. But I I feel like I feel like Donovan Mitchell has to step up here. Yeah, I think the whole Cavs team has to step up. I mean, <laughs> outside Brown, of that, Evan Mobley, like they got a good team. They just underachieve. They're just under. Yeah, they're they're unserious. I mean, yeah. they, they they will beat the best team in the league, and then they'll lose to a horrible team. Um, so I want to see them actually step up. And I mean, they they have to. I mean, they're the higher seed, but like, um, I want I want to see them actually dominate. So I'm gonna say, Cavs in five. Like they oh, have. Wow. Okay. And and I, I'm saying this because I'm trying to speak it to existence, <laughs> <laughs> because I think it'll be close. But yeah, I, but it's it's time like to do something. Yeah, I mean, you gotta do even something. though you'll play Boston, at least make it to the second round. Don't be another Utah Jazz. I mean, Donovan, it's time. Yeah, like, take over. They didn't even they didn't even um, consider you for Team USA, and you, you play. You're one of the best guards every single season. So like. Make a statement here, just like Paolo, um, Paolo is going to do on the other side. So I'm going to say Cavs in five, and then the three six, uh, the two seven, which is the Knicks and Sixers. Sixers. And Knicks. I think Brunson's going to have. It's funny how the USA announces his team right before the playoffs. I think yeah. Brunson he should have been on the team as well. I think he's going to have a big 
um, series. But if if Embiid plays, I think he'll go Game Seven. Yeah, um, he's he's gonna like he's gonna drag himself into the finish line. Yeah, it's and it's he's gonna be tough ma- to watch. Nightmare matchup for the Knicks if well, he can't Embiid. he can't be guarded. So yeah. that's the problem. Even if he's fifty percent, he can't yeah, be guarded. Can guard him. Yeah. Nobody, and that's why I think the Sixers will win in Game Seven. I'm not really confident with the Knicks. If they were the fourth seed, you know, I would like them better. But the the higher they went up, because the Cavs and the Bucks were avoiding, you yeah, know, the Sixers like or the Heat. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're avoiding those teams. So I just don't see the Knicks winning that matchup. And then um, the Pacers, Bucks. That's another thing with Kawhi. It's like. It's the same thing with Giannis. Yeah. When does he play? You know, does he miss two games? Does he miss one? Does he miss three? So if Giannis plays, I have the Bucks winning in seven. Uh, because just from what we've seen in the season, the, the Pacers, I think they're going to start hot at the mm-hmm. beginning. And I think Giannis will help the Bucks overcome them. If he doesn't play, I, th- I think the Pacers will win in five. Yeah. If, he, like, if Giannis doesn't no play, chance. it's over. Yeah, I agree. I just... I'm going into it thinking Giannis isn't playing because that injury looked yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was bad. scary. No, do not, not rush him. Do yeah. not rush yeah. him. You, can't. you already got a championship. I know every season it you're it's, it's your chance. I mean, but like he are, he already has a champ. You know, y'all have a championship recently, so it's not like this is his last chance. You want to keep him for years, yeah. so don't rush him. Okay. So then, Bucks. Uh, I mean, the um, the Celtics obviously beat the Cavs. Uh, there's just they don't match up yeah and then the the oh, dang this is the tough if or if not because with Kawhi, I, just, I chose Mavs no matter what yeah Sixers the Bucks if that's like a if it's Embiid Giannis but both are hobbled Bro, <laughs> that would be the worst hype ever like 78 75 like it's <laughs> It'd be like Uncle Drew in reality oh my god but they're actually young uh <laughs> that's so, that's so many hypotheticals in that matchup. I'm just gonna choose a team. Um, it's really Maxi versus Lillard. Yeah, you know, and I'm kind of with you on the Sixers. But if Giannis is playing, the calf is no joke. Like we're we're actually watching MB play. He's not you know fifty. Uh, he's not a hundred percent, but we're watching him play. Yeah. So I'll take the Sixers. I'll take another play in team. Reaching the West um, Eastern Conference Finals, but this time the Boston Celtics, you know, they I say they win in five yeah, against I, the, I don't think it's close. the Sixers. Yeah. yeah, I say they win in five. Um, Sixers will win their first home game just to give hope, yeah. and then the Boston Celtics dominate them. So we're both the same Boston and, and, and Denver. Yep. And then I get, I mean, I don't even know because I think both of those teams, I think they both match up well. Um, Oh, boy. I would give it to Boston. I think I, I think Boston would win. I think it's finally time. Finally. Yeah. And I just think the way that they match up, I think Porzingis can pull Jokic out of the paint defensively and get room for Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. And I think the biggest X factor is going to be Drew Holiday on Jamal Murray. I just think that's a bad matchup for Denver. Um, you, yeah. you know, with Murray going up against one of the best on-ball defenders. So give me Boston in seven in that series. Um, and, you know, give them another another trophy. <laughs> they I have guess. too many. <laughs> they have too many, yeah. Uh, but they haven't won in like two decades. I mean. It's been a while, yeah. Well, yeah, not that Boston. long, but obviously, you know, the, um, the big AG. three. Yeah. yeah. So, this is tough. So, I'm going to go off the regular season matchup. Um, and, you know, Denver won both of those games. Mm-hmm. And Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown played. Drew Holiday played. Kristaps Porzingis. Derek White played. Uh, let's look at the second game. Kristaps Porzingis, Derek White, Drew Holiday play so wow. all of their five guys six with horford uh you know they're playing in those games and denver beat them they beat them by two in the second game which was in january they beat um and then the recently march 7th the nuggets won by six 
So this is a close game. So it could go either way. And I'm going to have Tatum falling short again. I'm going to have Denver repeat, you know, and it's going to be game seven. I make a wild prediction about that. If Denver repeats, Jokic retires. Oh, can you imagine? I think if they repeat and he's a three-time MVP winner. MJ? Back-to-back finals MVPs. I, I think he's like, you know what? I've t- there's nothing more I can do. Like, I'm going to go play with my horses. Like, I'm. Yeah. What, what is the point? Like, I'm done. Like, I'm a top 20, arguably top 15 player all time. Like, I'm good. Yeah, because he, he's most likely going to, he's pretty much going to get the MVP this season. Yeah. And that's three MVPs, should be four. Should be four. And then two finals MVPs. Two finals five, MVPs, five champions. two championships. What else can you do? There's and he's not he does this because he's so good at it so yeah. like you said that is a bold statement but not really at the same time no, i'm just like he, if there's one guy who would do it it's him like he would just be like all right i'm just gonna retire like i don't i'm done and he's only 29 yeah so would he's not pretty shock. much it would be like a pull in the mj but he's not going to go play baseball like he's just going to play with his horses like you said yeah. nope, Whoa, nope. Shot there. of Oz, tell him the future <laughs> So we both have the same finals and we have different champions. Different champions. But we have the Mavericks. Since we cover Mavericks, we have the Mavericks reaching the Western Conference Finals, which is huge. Which Second is time huge. In three years. That's I don't think people will realize that. It's pretty yeah. crazy. That's crazy. And that will be a Jason Kidd extension. Yep. Oh, easily. Yep. Can you imagine 250 win? seasons and two western conference finals run i mean you have to at that point say what you will about jason you have to give him him credit man give him his credit then you have to say last year he just didn't like the roster yeah i mean that is this the real we said it this is a make or break season for kids yep Yep. yeah so 100 percent. so y'all see the usernames make sure y'all follow us on social and uh, make sure y'all like and subscribe to the podcast. We'll see. We'll see who has the better predictions. We're pretty much kind of similar. Pretty much the same, yeah. I want to see that Timberwolves Suns matchup. That's gonna be interesting. Yeah, <laughs> that's gonna be a good series. All right. Well, so last word, couple couple sentences. What do you want to see in Game One, Sean of Oz against the Clippers? I want to. I want to see Luca just dominate. I'm I'm ready. I'm ready to see Luca average 43, 10, and ten. I mean, I, I think he's just, I think he's just gonna go nuts. I, it's it, it, it's gonna be awesome to watch. You heard it, folks. I hope Luca and Kyrie just go off because you know Kyrie not being on Team USA, um, and then obviously Luca with the MVP, um, you know, this missile. I mean, erasure, but like, but. He'll he'll be a finalist, which is great, but he's not really seriously um, considered by the national media. It's either Jokic or SGA that they're pushing all of a sudden because they got first seed. Uh, But I want to see Luka and Kyrie, what we see in the regular season, translate to the postseason in game one. Just set the tone, especially if Kawhi doesn't play. You have to win that game. You have to. There's no excuses. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure y'all like and subscribe. Goodbye, everyone.